Next, Mr. Chameleon and the Friendly Divorce Murder Case. Tonight, we again present the famous Mr. Chameleon of Central Police Headquarters in his famous cases of crime and murder, brought to you by the makers of genuine Bayer Aspirin. Mr. Chameleon, as you know, is the famous and dreaded detective who frequently uses a disguise to track down a killer, a disguise which at all times is recognized by the audience. Tonight, we give you Mr. Chameleon in the friendly divorce murder case. It is 8 o'clock in the morning, and in the bustling city, most people are up and about their business. But the attractive apartment of Eric Belden is ominously quiet as Letty Stone, the daily cleaning woman, enters it. And she looks around her in surprise as she moves toward the bedroom door. Hmm. That's a funny thing. Mr. Belden's always up at this hour. He's usually finished with breakfast, too, and on his way to the studio. I don't see any breakfast dishes. Hmm. Bedroom door. It's closed. And the key's on the outside. Well, that's strange. Mr. Belden? Mr. Belden? Are you in there? Mr. Belden? Guess I'd better open the door and see. Might be sick. Oh! Oh, Mr. Belden! Oh, dear heaven! Oh, he was shot. He's dead. What's that? What's oh. the matter? Oh, Miss Katie, where'd you come from? Oh, I just came into the apartment. You left the front door open, Letty. But what's the trouble? Eric. He's dead, Miss Katie. Oh, poor Eric. I knew he'd been depressed lately, but what a horrible thing to do to kill himself that way. Oh, you, you think he did it himself, Miss Katie? I'd better call the police. Well, go ahead and call them, Letty, but I tell you, it's suicide. <laughs> But a little later, as Mr. Chameleon, the astute and dreaded detective, bends over the prostrate body of Eric Belden, he says to Detective Sergeant Dave Arnold, who is with him, Dave, look at this. Position of the gun. It was placed here too carefully. If it wasn't suicide, it was murder. You think so, Mr. Chameleon? There was no question of it, Dave. No powder burn at all. The gun was fired at a distance and then laid beside the body. Where are those two women? Right here, Mr. Chameleon. Buddy Stone, Miss Katie, come in here, please. Mrs. Stone, you're the cleaning woman here? Yes, sir. I understand that you found a murdered man. Murdered? Did you say but murdered, Mr. Chameleon? Well, he couldn't have been murdered. He was, Miss Katie. Uh, Martha Katie, is it? Yes, Mr. Chameleon. Uh, tell me something about this man. Why, Eric ran the Belden Fashion Studios. He supplied fashion photographs of models for the magazine. And you are one of his models, I take it. Yes, that's right. And you, uh, Letty Stone, uh, when you came in here this morning to clean, was the apartment empty? I mean empty except for the murdered man. Why, I, I thought it was, Mr. Chameleon. But you could have been mistaken. Now, the murderer could have been hiding somewhere. Tell me, what is this key doing on the outside of the bedroom door? So you noticed that. My job to notice things, Letty. When you came in, did you find the bedroom locked? Oh, well, no, Mr. Comedian. That's the strange part. It was unlocked, and the key was on the outside. Mr. Belden always locked his bedroom door at night. You say Eric Belden always locked his bedroom door when he went to bed? From the inside, of course. Uh, yes, Mr. Comedian. Why did he do that, Letty? What was he afraid of? He... He said he was afraid of burglars. You sound as if you didn't believe it. Well, neither do I believe it, Letty. If Eric Belden was afraid of anything, he was afraid of being murdered. And for very good reason. Someone has murdered him. Tried to make it look like suicide. But forgot to lock the bedroom door when leaving and take the key along. Miss Katie, uh, what were you doing here at the apartment so early? I beg your pardon? I believe you heard me. 
What were you doing here in Eric Belden's apartment at 8 o'clock in the morning? I had an appointment with Eric, a business appointment. We were going to Park Avenue where Eric intended to take pictures of me modeling for clothes. And you stopped here first. To meet him, Miss Cady, or to take the key from the lock where the murderer had forgotten it in all the excitement. Mr. Chameleon, you can't think that I killed poor Eric. Well, why should I? We were simply business acquaintances. How about that letter? Well, she was here an awful lot. She and Mr. Bellin were thick as thieves. Be quiet, you wretched old woman. And as for keys, you have an extra key to the apartment. You could have let yourself in, Letty, and robbed him and murdered him. That's a lie, Mr. Chameleon. That's a wicked lie. Did you have an extra key to the apartment, Letty? Why, yes. Yes, sure. Well, let me have it, please. But I didn't kill Mr. Bellin. I haven't said you did yet. And as for Miss Katie's statement... Mr. Chameleon. Yes, Dave, what is it? What's the minute? Martha Katie. I just remembered. Huh? She was known as the glory girl. She's the model who was mixed up in that murder and blackmail case three years ago. Of course, Dave. How stupid of me not to have remembered. Of course, Martha Katie is the same one. Well, so what? That doesn't mean I killed Eric Belden. Why don't you go after Cherry? If anyone had a reason for killing him, she did. Who was Cherry? Eric's ex-wife. She was one of his models, too. He'd reneged on his alimony, and Cherry was threatening him. She and her old battle axe of a mother were both threatening him. What about it, Letty? Did you know about this? Well... Did you? Yes, Mr. Chameleon. Miss Cherry was here only last night. She and Mr. Belden had an awful row. She said he was a heel. And he was. He's the kind that should have been killed. But uh, I had nothing against him. Except that you hated him, apparently. Where does Cherry, Belden's former wife, live, Letty? Eh? With her mother. Mrs. Holt, they have another apartment in this building. Uh, what is the phone number, please? Here it is, on this pad on Mr. Belden's desk. Thank you. Now you're using some sense, Mr. Chameleon. Oh? Why, Miss Katie? Because I'm calling Cherry Belden and you think suspicion is diverted from you? Only it isn't. Hello? Hello. I would like to speak to Cherry Belden, please. Who's calling? Is this her mother, Mrs. Holt? Who is calling? The police. This is Chameleon of Central Police Headquarters. Eric Belden has been murdered, and I want to speak to his ex-wife. Well, Jerry's not here, and I don't know where she is. Oh, really, Mrs. Holt? Is that all you have to say? What else can I say? My daughter isn't here. Oh, so you are Mrs. Holt. I was afraid that you might pretend that you were the maid. You don't seem disturbed by the news of your son-in-law's murder. Or didn't it come as a surprise? See here, you can't speak to me like that. You can't insult me. I am not trying to insult you, Mrs. Holt, but I want to know where your daughter Cherry is or when you expect her back. I have no idea. I can't help you. Then we shall have to help ourselves. Who are you calling now, Mr. Chameleon? Central Police Headquarters, Miss Katie. A direct line to the police commissioner's office. Any other questions you'd like to ask? Yes. You talked to Cherry's mother. Couldn't you tell from just talking to her she was a terrible woman? Miss Katie, in a murder case, it's never smart for one suspect to run down another. It's often... Hello, Commissioner speaking. Hello, Commissioner. This is Chameleon. Eric Belden was murdered, and it was made to look like suicide. I want a general alarm sent out for his ex-wife, Cherry Belden. Good. What's the description? Uh, Letty, you describe her, please. Uh, well, she's very tiny and blonde and has blue eyes, Mr. Chameleon. She's, uh... In her 20s. Her 20s? She's 30 if she's a day. Uh, she's between 25 and 30, Commissioner. Uh -huh. Blonde, blue-eyed, very small, lives with her mother, Mrs. Holt, here in this apartment building. You think she murdered Belden, Chameleon? Well, there's a chance of it, Commissioner. But uh, she's not the only one who might have done it. Far from it. This chap Belden was a fashion photographer. And his life, I gather, was full of women. And I think Dave Arnold and I will pay a visit to his office, to the Belden Fashion Studio, which uh, must have been a clearinghouse for some of the most beautiful girls in New York. And a little later, we find Mr. Chameleon and Dave walking down the corridor which leads to Eric Belden's fashion studio. And Dave is saying... You really think we'll turn up any leads here, Mr. Chameleon? Well, to be perfectly honest with you, Dave, I decided to come down here... But... Arguing with you, Dave, Mrs. listen. Belden. I don't care what There's someone in the studio. Silly letters with me. So get out of 
of my way. I'm not moving, Mrs. Belden, till you put those letters back. Mrs. Belden? That must be Cherry Belden. Come along, Dave. Oh, Good morning, ladies. I'm sorry to interrupt a private quarrel, but I am Chameleon of Central Police Headquarters. Are you Cherry Belden? Why, yes. And you, young lady? I'm Beryl Carrington, Mr. Belden's secretary, and Mr. Belden isn't in. I am well aware of that fact, Miss Carrington. I just left his apartment where he was found murdered. Oh. Shot through the head. Murdered? Oh, no. Eric's dead. I can't believe it. Poor Eric. You really sound sorry, Mrs. Belden. I am, Mr. Chameleon. If you're a detective, I suppose you've already learned that Eric and I were divorced, but it was a friendly divorce. We were incompatible, that's all. Oh, really? And uh, what are those letters that you've got there? I heard Miss Carrington forbid you to take them from the office. Then nothing, Mr. Chameleon. I shall be the judge of that. Let me see them, please. No. Well, I see they're written by your mother. Threatening Eric Belden. I'd say they're very nasty letters. Your mother was upset. She didn't mean half she said. Eric promised to pay me $250 a month alimony, and he didn't. I hadn't been working lately, and Mother got excited. So did you, Cherry Belden. Excited enough to try and get those letters that your mother wrote and destroy them. Because I thought they put my mother in a false light. Good heavens, I didn't know that poor Eric was dead. Cherry, oh, thank heavens, your mother... Here, a detective named Chameleon is looking for you. And he found her, Mrs. Holt. I'm Chameleon. How do you do? Oh, how do you do? Well, so you found my daughter... Isn't that nice? Yes, indeed. Uh, you lied to me, Mrs. Holt. You said that you didn't know where Cherry was. Why'd you lie? Well, I, I wasn't sure she was here in Eric's studio. I think you were. You knew that she'd come to get those letters. The letters that you wrote Eric Belden threatening him. Threats were the only thing that Eric understood. He, oh, not that he wasn't a fine man in many ways. It was a friendly divorce, you know, Mr. Chameleon. Just incompatibility. In this case, Mrs. Holt, the word incompatibility may simply be another word for mother-in-law. How dare you say that? Do you think I killed Eric? Why, Eric was our source of income. Killing him would be like killing the goose that lays the golden egg. Mr. Chameleon. Yes, Miss Carrington. I, I'd like to speak to you alone. Do you mind stepping into Mr. Belden's private office? What for, Miss Carrington? Yes, what for? Anything you have to say, you can say in front of us. Uh, Miss Carrington apparently feels otherwise. Dave, you keep an eye on Mrs. Holt and her daughter, Cherry Belden. I shall be right back. Yes, sir. And now, Miss Carrington, what's on your mind? Mr. Chameleon, I happen to know that in addition to the alimony Mr. Belden was paying Cherry, he also took out a life insurance policy in her favor. A life insurance policy? Mm -hmm. For how much? Fifty thousand dollars. Uh -huh. Tidy little sum. Thank you for the valuable information, Miss Carrington. I tell you, I am going in there, and I want to know what that Carrington girl is saying to Mr. Chameleon. Well, I take it that Mrs. Holt would consider it valuable information, too. Now then, Miss Carrington, what are you saying? Oh, Mother, dear, please, you mustn't be so excited. Mr. Chameleon, what has this girl been telling you? Mrs. Holt, I want to ask you about a key. A key that was found on the outside of Eric Belden's bedroom door. The door to the room where he was murdered. Is that what the two of you were talking about, keys? Mrs. Holt, Eric's murderer forgot that key. Now, who was it? Who was in his apartment last night? Your daughter, Cherry, for one. That's not so. Cherry was with me all afternoon and evening. Oh, that's very strange. The cleaning woman said that she was at Eric's apartment. Yes, I was, Mr. Chameleon, just for an hour. Mother, you've forgotten. I went out for an hour around dinner time. What a... Oh, yes, that's right, Cherry. I did forget. I, I've been suffering a great deal lo lately from loss of memory. You sound to me like a woman with an excellent memory. Mrs. Holt, do you or your daughter have a key to Eric Belden's apartment? No, no. Mr. Chameleon, that's not so. Mr. Belden told me that Cherry had a key. She wouldn't return to him after their divorce. In fact, he was going to have the lock changed. Meanwhile, he always slept with his bedroom door locked. Thank you again, Miss Carrington. Uh, where is your purse, Jerry Belden? Ah, uh, and on the table. Dave, will you search it, please? Yes, sir. This is an outrage. Mother, you're only making matters worse. And you, Miss Carrington, I don't understand what you think you're doing. Don't you, Cherry? I understand her perfectly. Here, Mr. Chameleon, here's the key. It's even marked. Eric Belden, 507. Handle it very carefully, Dave. I want to send it in to be checked. 
the fingerprints. Who knows? It might have Mrs. Holt's fingerprints. That's just it. Now I'm going to tell the truth. Mr. Chameleon, I said I understood Miss Carrington, and I do. But I've been too decent to say anything. This girl, Mr. Chameleon, this Beryl Carrington, was Eric Belden's secretary, and she was more than that. She was the cause of my daughter's divorce. She was the woman in the case. Mr. Chameleon and the friendly divorce murder case continues in just a moment. The two most important kinds of relief to anyone suffering from ordinary headache, neuritic, or neuralgic pain are fast relief and gentle, dependable relief. And genuine Bayer aspirin gives you both. It's amazingly fast because it's ready to go to work in two seconds. And it's completely dependable because its single active ingredient is so gentle to the system, mothers give it even to small children on their doctor's advice. Add to this the fact that no other pain reliever can match Bayer Aspirin's record of use by millions of normal people without ill effect. And it's easy to see why Bayer Aspirin is one thing you can take with utmost confidence. So don't experiment with drugs that have not stood the test of time. For fast relief, and for the dependable relief that's important to your health, do as millions do, use Bayer Aspirin. When you buy, ask for it by its full name, Bayer Aspirin, not just for aspirin alone. Get the 100-tablet bottle and you get Bayer Aspirin tablets for less than a penny apiece. And now back to Mr. Chameleon and the friendly divorce murder case. It is a few minutes later, and in the Belden Fashion Studios, Mr. Chameleon stands facing three women who played such a vital part in the life of Eric Belden before he was mysteriously murdered. And he says to Beryl Carrington, Belden's secretary, So you were the woman in the case, Miss Carrington. You are the real reason why Eric Belden divorced his wife, Cherry. No. There was nothing between Eric and me, Mr. Chameleon. Nothing except a, a, a business relationship. That's not true, Mr. Chameleon. Miss Carrington was in love with Eric. Then why tell me that yours was a friendly divorce, Cherry Belden? Your whole story sounds pretty fishy to me. And besides, you've lied consistently. You've lied consistently. You even told me that you didn't have a key to your ex-husband's apartment. And it was right there in your purse. I didn't have a key. I don't know how that got into my purse. Isn't that so, Mother? I had no key. Absolutely, Cherry. You should be ashamed, Mr. Chameleon, to accuse my daughter of murder. Mrs. Holt, I have a motto. The innocent must be protected. The guilty must be punished. To prove that your daughter or anyone else is innocent, I must first prove who is guilty. Mr. Chameleon, I, I didn't quite tell the truth. I know I first said it was a friendly divorce, but that was because I didn't want any scandal. Is that wrong? It's wrong to accuse Miss Carrington falsely, Cherry Belden. And that's exactly what she's doing. Cherry and her mother are trying to frame me to get themselves in the clear. That's a lie, a vicious lie. Please, that's all for now. You and your daughter may go, Mrs. Holt, but don't try to leave town, either of you. Dave, you show the ladies out, please? Yes, Mr. Chameleon. Mr. Chameleon, you'll hear more of this. I fully expect to, Mrs. Holt. Well, this is a dirty business, Mr. Chameleon. <sighs> it certainly is, Dave. That attempts to frame Miss Carrington here certainly backfired. But uh, I want the best men we have to tail them constantly. Have uh, Davis and McCarthy go over to that apartment. Right, Mr. Command. And as for me, I shall be looking for just one little thing, one small detail that I know will trap the killer. What's that, Mr. Chameleon? Fingerprints, Miss Carrington. I noticed some on the door of Eric Belden's bedroom. You see, I'm sure the murderer is an amateur. Being an amateur, they wouldn't stop to think of erasing evidence like fingerprints. My gosh, Mr. Chameleon, everybody, including old ladies in wheelchairs, knows that killers shouldn't leave fingerprints around. I know, I know, Dave, but an amateur killer is very often emotional. They think of those things too late, like the key in the bedroom door. They forgot that, didn't they? Anyway, tomorrow morning, I'm going to search Eric's apartment. Search it thoroughly for any and all fingerprints. But why tomorrow? Why not now? Because first, Dave, I want to check on the past life of Cherry Belden and her mother, Mrs. Holt. So tomorrow is soon enough to look for fingerprints. Miss Carrington, goodbye, and thank you very much for your invaluable help. If there's anything else I can do, please call on me, Mr. Comedian. I will. Oh, in fact, you might go through Mr. Belden's files and see whether there are any more threatening letters from Cherry's mother. I'll do that immediately, Mr. Comedian. Good. Oh, 
Uh, one more thing. Uh, did you know a model named Martha Cady? Martha Cady? Yes, I have a hunch that Eric Belden was quite uh, crazy about her. Yes, I remember her. I had very little to do with her, though. Mm-hmm. And uh, Letty Stone, the cleaning woman at Belden's apartment. Do you know her? Yes, I saw her once or twice. Uh, you're frowning. Why? Didn't you like Letty Stone? She's not young, Mr. Chameleon, and she's a hard-working woman. Who might welcome a few thousand dollars. Well, that's what I figured. And I also figured that she knows Mrs. Holt, Belden's former mother-in-law. Must have known her. She does, Mr. Chameleon. One of the few times I ever went to Mr. Belden's apartment, I found the two of them in the living room talking away like mad. They stopped the minute I arrived. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. All ties in. It's quite possible that Letty, the cleaning woman, could have admitted Cherry's mother to Belden's apartment the night that he was murdered. Well, we'll soon see. Those fingerprints will tell the story. Goodbye, Miss Cannington. Goodbye, Mr. Chameleon. You're going to pick up Letty Stone and question her now, Mr. Chameleon? No, not exactly, Dave. What the heck? I don't get it. It's not like you to move cautiously. Why not grab her quick and question her? I intend to, Dave, but uh, not as chameleon. I'm going to make an appointment with Letty Stone, that cleaning woman, to meet a special police searcher in Eric Belden's apartment. And I shall be there, disguised as that special police searcher, a very quiet but very thorough cop named Christopher Madden. And so, that night, we find Mr. Chameleon in his disguise as Christopher Madden, a police searcher in the Belden apartment with Detective Sergeant Dave Arnold. And with them is the cleaning woman, Letty Stone, a badly frightened Letty Stone, to whom Chameleon is saying in the voice of his disguise, Mrs. Stone, my name is Madden. I'm a special police searcher. I came to this apartment to look for further fingerprints. The murderers. But, but Mr. Madden, uh, why send for me? I mean... My fingerprints is sure to be all over Mr. Belden's apartment. I used to come here almost every day and clean. Well, then you can't be much of a cleaner, Mrs. Stone. You leave fingerprints all over the place? Well, there'd be sure to be some around. I couldn't help it. Uh, what about Mrs. Holt, uh, Belden's former mother-in-law? What do you mean? What about her? Well, you and she were friendly, weren't you? Make a deal? She promised you some of Mr. Belden's insurance money to keep your mouth shut? I don't know what you mean. I never said two words to Mrs. Holt. Now I... I gotta get home and cook supper for my husband. Uh... At, uh, nine o'clock? Well, he don't get home from work till nine o'clock. All right, Mrs. Stone, you can go. We're leaving immediately, too, right after you. Good night. Well, good night, sir. And I don't know Mrs. Holt hardly at all. Mr. Chameleon, for Pete's sake, you've done it again. Every time you get someone cornered in this case, you let him go. Dave, it won't be long now before you see a very interesting little drama unfold. I'm going to call the police commissioner. As soon as I finish dialing, turn off all the lights, will you? Oh, I get it. Buddy Stone will think we're gone, and she may come back. Mm -hmm. All right, you can turn off the lights now, Dave. Okay. Hello, Commissioner. This is Chameleon. Yes? We're at the Belden apartment. What is the report on the key to the front door? The key that we found in Cherry Belden's purse. Just what you thought, Chameleon. You hit the bullseye. Good. Send the report to the corner drugstore, where Dave will pick it up later. Right. And good hunting. I think we've got them, Commissioner. Goodbye. <coughs> Mr. Chameleon, I think someone's trying the front door. Yes, you're right. Can you see in this darkness, Dave? Well enough. Yes, sir. By gosh, the door is opening. Is it Letty, the cleaning woman? All I can really make out is that it's a woman. She's got a flashlight, Mr. Chameleon. She's wiping things off with a damp cloth. Right, Dave. Shall I grab her? No, no. Not yet. Let's see if she goes to the bedroom door. Bedroom where Belton was murdered. She's going there, all right. Now she's wiping off the door. Let her go inside. Now, where's the light switch? Right here. Turn it on, Dave. Let's have light. Plenty of light. And see what sort of a bird we've snared in our net. Oh, 
All right, Miss Carrington, put your hands up and keep them up. I have a gun which I shall use if I have to, the way you used one on Eric Belden. Mr. Chameleon, what are you doing here? I could ask you the same question. Only I happen to know what you're doing here, Miss Carrington. I scared you into thinking that you might have left fingerprints. I said I was going to look for those fingerprints tomorrow. But why should I kill Eric? Because of Martha Cady. This afternoon, when I mentioned her name, I watched you very closely. A look of complete hatred flashed across your face. Passed very quickly, but I caught it, Miss Carrington. Eric Belden had thrown you over for Martha Cady. No, Terry Belden killed Eric. That key was found in Cherry's purse. You planted it there when Cherry Belden wasn't looking. You must have, Miss Carrington, since it bears your fingerprints. <gasps> no. I just got the report from police headquarters. And besides, I saw a door key in your desk, Miss Carrington. The key to the front door of this apartment, which you used just now. I deliberately didn't mention it, hoping that you'd use it. And you did. No, no, you have no evidence. I have all the evidence that we need. You murdered Eric Belden, Miss Carrington. You murdered him, and your plan was to make it look as if Eric Belden had committed suicide in a locked room. But in the excitement of leaving after the murder, you forgot to lock the door. You left the key in the lock on the outside. Stop it, stop it! And then when I stated Belden's death wasn't suicide in a locked room, but murder, you tried to plant it on Cherry, a woman that you must have hated as much as you hated the other beautiful model, Martha Cady. All right, all right, I confess, I did it. But all the time you were so friendly, I thought you believed me. I know, I know, Miss Cannington. It's the way we cops have to fool people. But what is really amazing is the way a criminal like yourself always believes that he or she is fooling the police. And with these words, Mr. Chameleon concludes tonight's murder case. Next time an ordinary headache threatens to spoil your plans, get fast relief by taking Bayer Aspirin. You'll be amazed at how quickly Bayer Aspirin works. And the reason is that these tablets start to disintegrate within two seconds after you take them. To see for yourself that this is true, just drop a Bayer Aspirin tablet in a glass of water and watch what happens. Before it reaches the bottom of the glass, it will begin to disintegrate. It does the same in your stomach, hence brings relief with astonishing speed. Yes, and Bayer Aspirin is dependable, too. No other pain reliever can match its record of use by millions of normal people without ill effect. When you buy, ask for it by name, Bayer Aspirin, not just for aspirin alone. Get the 100-tablet bottle and you get Bayer Aspirin tablets for less than a penny apiece. Listen next Wednesday night at this same time for Mr. Chameleon, the man of many faces, in The Suspicious Father Murder Case. The part of Mr. Chameleon is played by Carl Swenson, with dialogue by Marie Baumer from the original story by Frank and Ann Hummert, music directed by Victor Arden. Your announcer is Howard Claney. A remarkable scientific discovery now makes it possible to cut down tooth decay. You simply use new ammoniated Dr. Lyons tooth powder. Based on a formula developed by University of Illinois scientists, it actually destroys bacteria lactobacillus acidophilus, which cause tooth decay. Now think of the pain, worry, and expense this can save you. The wonderful difference it can make in the health and beauty of your teeth. So to cut down tooth decay, to have sounder, healthier, handsomer teeth, Use ammoniated Dr. Lyons tooth powder, both regular Dr. Lyons tooth powder and new ammoniated Dr. Lyons or at all drug and toilet goods counters. Listen for Mr. Chameleon in The Suspicious Father murder case next Wednesday night at this time. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs> 